We've got an in-studio guest that uh, has information that we've been asked about a number of times. People want to know about our fabulous new YMCA and Aquatic Center. Yeah, and, that's right. And what can they do and when can they get open and when can people right. get in there and, and uh, how does Phase 3 affect all of that? So... Uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Bob Romero in studio. Bob, Bob Romero, Bob Romero. I know, the crowd's outside <laughs> starting to grow. Wee! What's the pitchfork for you. in the torches, though? I'm not really sure <laughs> on that. But, uh, he is the executive director, the man in charge at the YMCA, both downtown and the Aquatic Center, right? Yes. All right, all right. Bob, good morning. How are you? You know, well, other than you guys trying to line up tar and feathers for me, I'm doing pretty well, actually. Well, so. that's good. Yeah, we don't have to line them up, Bob. They'll be there. <laughs> they're, they're volunteering, yeah. So, a lot of people, uh, me being one of them, um, I, the mics are up, sir. The mics are up. Um, wondering about the YMCA uh, and uh, uh, when can they have sort of normalized activity. And I guess we're not there yet, but, but we are to a point where if people will just plan ahead a little bit, uh, there's opportunities, right? There are. And I think one of the things, certainly under Phase 3, it changed on a number of fronts. One of those is on fitness that um, you know, we're at 50% capacity and we are not doing reservations on fitness any longer. There are not specific hours or uh -huh. sessions. Uh -huh. So fitness is at 50% capacity and we just continue to um, have people that come in and use the fitness area. We give them a spray bottle and a towel and ask them to wipe down every area that we use and we have staff going behind them and sanitizing behind them. And, um, and we use Virex that is something that will kill anything and everything. Um, yeah. And so it, um, you know, is an approved chemical use for, for coronavirus and, and other bacteria. So it um, is a matter of we're just uh, uh, not okay. running at full capacity, but we have the machine capacity and we continue to have spacing and some space between machines to ensure that uh, there is, you know, adequate distance sure. between people working out. And are so, we masked as we're working out? Uh, we are masked in and out of the facility and moving around the facility, but for strenuous ex exercise, you can remove oh, your mask. Good. And so, okay. look, if I'm bending over tying my shoes and need extra air, <laughs> <laughs> I can maybe. If you're tying them together, I hope you're okay. But uh, that's a different story. But, uh, well, what about the downtown facility? Is that still closed? The downtown facility, we uh, have been running our Y Academy program yeah. there, which has been uh, for students doing remote learning. And we um, are getting ready to open downtown. One of the things that we <coughs> need to do on that front, Lance, is we really need to wait until after May 3rd when the governor makes his next announcement on phases and what is happening. This issue of potentially going backwards, of going backwards to a phase two, oh. um, trying to bounce back and forth in a three-week window and change the structure of your organization and the way you manage people and the flow of customers and all of those things is a really challenging process to try to even wrap your arms around. Yeah. Yeah. And so we want to find out on May 3rd where we stand. We're not going to open the downtown facility in a phase two mode. Um, that is, the, a lot of the amenities and things that people want at that facility uh, are found in locker rooms. We've done some significant significant renovations downtown and uh, invested a lot in updating pool and hot tubs and various things. Our old 1957 Birchfield boilers blew up, and so we wow. have new HVAC units for heating and cooling on the first floor and in the locker room areas, uh, in addition to having updated hot tubs in both the men's and women's locker rooms and, and the pool itself and the pool heater and a lot of different elements. So um, we're... Looking forward to being open to or ready to open downtown, but we really need to make sure that we're in the right conditions to open downtown, so that the people that like to use that facility can use it in the manner that they yeah. would like yeah. to use it. And so, really, until we find out um, where we stand on that, and but we do anticipate that hopefully uh, we will be opening that next month. You've kind of been. Uh, I don't want to say the rebel because you haven't been a rebel, but you've been you've been a fighter for that that place over over the last year. You know, well, you know, it's we have had um, some opportunities to provide input to the senior policy staff in the governor's office. Right. And, and my position has been that if policies are safe in one part of the state, they should be safe in another part of the state. And if practices and procedures make sense make sense and protect people's health um, if that's true um, 
you know, in Olympia, then it should be true in Yakima. And so when we were left along with Wenatchee as being the only two Ys in the state not allowed to open, yeah, I, I did push back against that. I, you know, certainly did. But my feeling was that we needed to, we followed protocols and procedures, and we were protecting the health of people using our facility, and we were being responsible operators. I just felt that there were periods of time that we were forced to remain closed that there was no real science data or logic behind it. But other than that, uh, you know, our position has been that we have followed the protocols and the rules and we've stayed within those boundaries and we've done those things that have been mandated by the state. And we have made sure that in our facility that we are doing the things that we should be doing to protect our users. You're the you're part of the positive story. You're the yeah. exercise and distraction yeah. and yeah. activity that uh, yeah. is, uh, you know, to countermand the negative impacts of COVID. Yeah. You're, you're one of the good guys. So. Well, and I, I think there's that mix of trying to figure out um, how do you address really physical, mental health of people being able to use a facility and do those things that keep them healthy and certainly some of our seniors that um, use the aquatic center or, or fitness facility um, were really struggling not having access and not having yeah. the ability to do some of those things sure. but um, you know our senior classes are very robust our senior workout groups are very loyal and uh, they're back doing classes at you know at the new Y facility at Chesterly back in the gym and um, that has been a great thing to see. But again, we've limited capacity. We've spaced people out. We're doing those things that we're trying to make yeah. sure we protect those people. And um, certainly, as we move forward, we would hope that as you know, vaccination rates increase and that level goes up, that um, that this becomes less of an issue as we go. But on the aquatic side of things, that we have, um, it is difficult the way this community. Um, rolled out in the first four months that we were open at full capacity it was wonderful to see that we'd have sometimes two to three hundred people <laughs> in an afternoon yeah. coming out to swim and that was terrific but under the current conditions we really that's not a safe position to create and so what we have done for aquatics if you want to we were able to now turn back on the water features we Yay. hadn't been able to do that until just the last month but um we now have the Lazy River back, and during certain hours, we have the children's play structure available, and the slides are available again. Excellent. And so what we've done is that you can reserve a spot. If you just go to the YMCA website, www.yakimayymca.org, there's a little button on the right, right on the home page, that you can click on that if you want to book a swim time. And what that does, whether you're a Y member or just a community member, and you would like to come in and swim, there are 12 slots in the afternoon, early evening for um, first one's at 3, the next one's at 4.30, and the next one's at 6.05, Monday through Friday. And you can book one of those 12 slots, and for a slot that you book, you can bring in up to five people. And so just like before, if you're not a member, you can pay the, you know, the day use pass. And sure. if that's one person, a couple, or if it's a family with five, um, you'd pay the appropriate rate, whether it's for an individual pass or for a family pass and you can come in and swim for that hour and a half and those water features are back on but again we're limiting capacity and making sure that we protect people and and limit close contact and and do that as people come into the facility and so um, the family locker rooms which are individual spaces um, are available they have restrooms and also changing areas and so those are available to use and we sanitize and clean those very regularly um, the main locker rooms are not open at this point but um, we you know it's nice to be able to give people the opportunity to come back and enjoy the aquatics features and you the bet. splash yeah. and play and that and then on saturday we're running three sessions very same thing that you can go online and book those excellent and those are um those are running at at one at 2 30 and at four and so it um is an opportunity for people to to get back in bring their kids into swim and play yeah. and then we do have morning toddler time where um you can sign up for that as well where um, parents can um, bring in the toddlers and be in the zero depth pool in the shallow water and and play with kids and so we call that Dave depth. Dave depth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just to the knees. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, it's a place you can go without water wings, Dave. It's really <laughs> nice, it I've heard it's exciting. What I don't like is that new feature you have up with the weights, though. They whisper at you. They go, "You can't lift me anymore. Adam. <laughs> you can't even. Don't even think about it." 
<laughs> I wonder when you put that in and how you got it so personalized. <laughs> it's it's, stuff. I actually say if, my name. If, if you are on our website right now at newstalkkit.com, you'll find the story. Just just look for it. Yakima Aquatic Center Kids Area now open, and there's links in that story that'll get you to the why. Bob, well, thanks for coming in this morning. Always, uh, always enjoy having yeah. you in, Bob, and, and great information. Yep. I know you guys are going to maximize as much as you can and look forward for the day when you can say, let's do what we used to do. Yeah. Let's pack them in and have yeah. some fun. So yeah. uh, we wish you the best of luck with that. Well, thanks so much. We look forward to having that opportunity to resume full operations at some point uh, coming soon. It's been a while, and uh, when that day comes, it'll be wonderful for us and for the community as a whole, and certainly appreciate the support.